Hello, and welcome to the Nonfiction Authors Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Nonfiction Authors Association. Dot com. It's a supportive community where writers connect, exchange ideas, and learn how to write, market, publish, promote, and profit with your nonfiction books. And you can join our email list by text message. Get the help you need by picking up your phone and texting the letters NFAA to phone number 22828. And you'll get automatically signed up for our email list. That's NFAA to phone number 22828. And now stay tuned for our guest expert with tips to help you succeed as a nonfiction author. Today's episode is a top replay with your host, NFAA founder, Stephanie Chandler. And now I'd like to introduce our guest today. Crystal Day is an award-winning and best-selling author, kingdom entrepreneur, international speaker, certified Christian coach, and COO of Daylight Publishers Limited, a faith-based publishing and consultancy company committed to helping aspiring authors through the process of writing, publishing, and marketing their books. As a book coach and business strategist, Crystal has helped hundreds of authors and leaders to bring their author's dream to reality so they can impact lives. She provides marketing consultancy services to new and emerging solopreneurs who want to grow their brand online and offline so they can create consistent revenue. Hey, Crystal, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Stephanie. I am so excited to be here and to be a part of this amazing association. Oh, you are awesome. Thank you. I am so glad we're talking about this topic. I think it's more timely than it's ever been before. So can we start by asking you, what do you mean by building a business around a book? Of course. All right. So here's the thing. I do believe one, as an author, you are already an entrepreneur. That's that's one of the things that we want to get very clear, especially as when you're an indie author, as you call it. So even if you get a publishing company to assist you, if you don't have a contract per se with a traditional company, you know that you are almost, you have to be operating at your book as an entrepreneur because you'd have to be responsible for selling it and marketing it and, you know, just that kind of thing. Now, the idea of building a business around a book is not only about just using a book to build a re- revenue stream. When I think about building a business around a book, it's now using that book to create multiple streams of income and possibly even grow your impact that that book could have because of the different streams of income that will come from that one book idea or that one book that you have published. So when I think about building a business, one is using understanding first that as a author you are already an entrepreneur because now you are you know you're getting money and you back and forth but also how can you create revenue streams from this book i love that you said grow your impact what do you mean by that so one of the things when i think about a book most like even if you have a dream to write a book, it, even if whatever your goal or motive to write that book is, the truth is you want the book to go out there and bless people. You want it to inspire people. Or, or if you're writing more, for example, a fiction book per se, then you're entertaining. But in our case, as nonfiction, we're either trying to inspire, we're trying to educate persons so when you think about impact the truth is you want whatever book that you're writing that when the reader reads reads it it has some kind of effect on them it's not one of those books that they just read and just oh forget about no it's one of I'm sure every author once you write a book the idea is okay once the reader reads it it will leave something with them Absolutely. That's one of my number one reasons I love nonfiction so much. I'm so glad you said that. So what are some types of revenue streams that authors can begin adding to their businesses? All right. So, of course, I'm sure the nonfiction association, when you go on the website, like what I'm saying right now is not new because this is something that you guys have been teaching for a while. But in this time, as you said, sometimes 
as authors, sometimes we know what to do, but it's times like these when a crisis is coming along with what's going on in the world, then we are now almost challenged to say, you know what, I'm going to take a step. So when I think about some revenue streams, you, of course, have speaking. You have membership groups that's actually growing right now. You have the coaching, but also understanding that coaching is different from consultancy. Uh, you are the training model. You have as a speaker, you can also, you know, just use your books to do products, right? Have additional products with your book. So some these are some of the ways that you can know build different revenue streams with your book. So, um, and I also believe there's a big distinction between coaching and consulting. Can you explain what you mean by that? All right. So with coaching, coaching on the whole life coaching and definition really is to help persons to move from one place to another. Now, one of the things with coaching is that is a partnership where you come along with somebody to pull out what is already in them. So it's not necessary to teach them what you know is to more partner with them to help them to get from what is it that they desire to achieve and then you using, of course, your wisdom and your knowledge to help them to get to where they are. With consultancy, though, most when you're hiring a consultant, you're hiring an expert up front. So you want them to teach you what is it that you did to accomplish that, right? And that it's, it's why I believe that both is very important and sometimes it becomes interchangeable changeably because as a coach sometimes you find that okay if you find that a client is stuck a certain way you can make certain suggestion but understanding with coaching that it's about making a suggestion and not trying to dictate what is it that the client should do so that's basically the most important um, distinction when it comes down to coaching again it's about partnering with the client while consultancy most time has to do with the teaching aspect and ensuring that your expertise are um, on the forefront great great description and what tips do you have on starting a coaching or a consulting business all right so i as i mentioned i think that it you can sometimes use them interchangeably depending or you can decide to do both do do them separately no let me I, I work I teach better with examples so I'm going to give you an example for example you have written a book a non-fiction book for mothers um, and it, it's about mothers helping um, trying to do self-care you know mothers because they're always trying to uh, do everything for everybody as they do do self care. So your book is helping mothers. I'm just making this up as I go. Um, mm-hmm. So your your book is to help mothers to find that aspect of self care. Now, as a coach, if you decide to do a coaching business or a coaching program with your book, what you'd find is that you would know try to find out a lot about the 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 that client, and then while you will be using a book as a guide to give them different ideas of how they could implement this self-care what you'll actually be doing with the client is help them create their own path you help them to create you know their so for example in your book you might say okay there are 10 ways that you do self-care but they find that okay for them it two of the 10 techniques works best for them and then you go ahead and help them to customize their own self-care plan with a consultancy aspect again you're just teaching them so a lot of consultancy is about teaching them sharing the different expertise and trying to most of the times help them to follow a path similar not always the case but most times similar to your so you can as i said you can actually inter change board now as a we use in your book right now again you can choose to do group coaching where you have persons with group coaching, you most likely have to find persons that are similar to having the same, they have the same struggle. And then now you use your book as that guide to help them to customize. And of course, if you decide to go with the consultancy aspect, it could be that you are probably um, going to, for example, mom's group, and then you are now customizing some kind of training plan to share with that mom's group or that group of moms of different techniques to self-care. I hope that made sense. <laughs> I think it does. And, and I'm also thinking about a lot of um, authors I've talked to have resistance about hanging up the shingle that says I'm a consultant or I'm a coach. 
um, unless they've gone through maybe certification programs. I personally don't believe that you have to to acquire certifications in most cases, but I do think there's some benefits. I noticed you're you're you've had some certifications. What do you think, Crystal, are some of the benefits of maybe going after a coaching or a consulting certification program? Okay. All right. I think that with the consultancy aspect of it, you're you are able to actually navigate not doing any kind of training. If you decide to call yourself, for example, right now in the, the whole coaching space, you find people calling themselves strategists or you find, so they try not to use the word coach or consultant just because of that. But I do believe as a coach, it's good to get some level of exposure and training. It's not so much about the certificate aspect, but just to help you to understand the difference. And the truth is with coaching, you have different techniques that you use in order to maximize the results for the client. So it's not so much about, oh, because I get a certification, it makes me qualified. It's really learning a certain, it's almost like if you're learning to self-publish your book yourself. You, there are certain techniques that you want, you want to learn how to format properly. That uh, Similarly with coaching, there are certain techniques, you know, listening techniques, powerful questioning techniques, aff- um, affirmation techniques that you are able to learn, that you're able to um, operate at a higher level. But do I say... You, I don't think it it makes you less of a more qualified if you don't, but it's definitely encouraged to get certain training. Yeah. You know, I was, I was actually talking to a coach friend about this and she said she had gone through a program and said that she liked that it gave her some structure as well. So it also, you know, in addition to learning techniques she could use, it helped her figure out what the structure of her business would be. So I thought that was a really good, a good example um, Crystal speaking is a popular um, revenue stream and route for a lot of authors, but of course, this is an industry that's been hit pretty hard with our recent events. What are some alternatives to speaking? All right, so one alternative is what I'm doing right now, <laughs> this interview, right? And um, what you find is that I've been listening to a lot of the, the speaker podcasts since recently because, as you said, I... I currently live in Jamaica. I'm not sure if persons uh, would know that, but I currently live in Kingston, Jamaica, and I speak at least five to six times per month before. And of course, since March, I've not been able to do any speaking engagement. That means I, I personally had to be finding ways. Now, one of the things that you find is that there are uh, many opportunities online. And one of the things that while you are unable to necessarily get direct pay from speaking engagement, you actually, it's a great time for you to build credibility and your visibility online. So some alternatives, of course, pitching to podcasts. So if you have books, you can do research and see what are, because podcasts, um, persons are always looking for new and, and, and innovative stories. So you can actually do some research and pitch to some podcasts. Also, similarly, you know, reaching out to different associations, similar to like what I'm doing now, where I'm able to share my knowledge and then at the end share how I can um, not sell my services, but offer my services to persons that may be in need. Also, of course, live streaming. You can't, like, if you I follow a social media examiner and you find that the statistics is still showing that you know, persons are just not utilizing the the video. Now, video can be scary because I struggle with the whole video initially, but I do believe that you can get started even if it's just um, Facebook Live or Instagram Live. And again, imagine you put together something, even if it's some five-minute snippets, um, you know, of your book and put a link or stuff, I believe it can definitely build engagement around your book. So these are some of the alternatives I believe that we can definitely as authors tap into right now. I love that. Also, um, we've been doing more webinars and I think those can be a really yes. effective method. Are you doing those yourself? Yes, so I've definitely been doing far more webinars, which is which I, I personally say that, you know, even while this is kind of very sad, it's also a uh, 
time for us to be innovative because I've been wanting to do more webinars, more lives, and I've just not had the time. And this has no actually forced me to, okay, this is what you need to do. So now, and one of the things that you are able to do with these webinars and lives, you're able to save them and start a YouTube channel. So normally, you know, you'd have to buy these big equipments to try to have this fancy YouTube channel. You can actually just, you know, save those videos, save those webinars, put them on your YouTube. And also that will be able to, um, even after this, you are able to refer to people to your YouTube where you are being seen as an expert in that area. I love that. I've actually been kind of amused by watching the local newscasters and, and even celebrities going online and doing, you know, Zoom meetings and even just recording from home. And so many of them are ill-prepared for this. They're still wearing their earbuds while they're on screen and um, <laughs> that just kind of blows my mind because it's really not that complicated and I'm it's just going to, yeah, just get yourself a good, I, I have a Logitech web camera. It was like 60 bucks and that thing works great. It's got a built-in microphone. It's not that complicated to get these things going really. Yes. So what about um, online courses and things like that? Do you see that as a good opportunity? I, I do believe that no, again, also people are home, they are looking to, you know, there are a lot of, they are more available to do courses and um, buy courses and stuff. So I do believe that that's also a great way to tap into another revenue stream. You no, know, they, 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 I think because I've, I've done a few um, courses. The thing with courses that is that you have to start thinking about how you get these courses out um, in terms of promotion. So while you are thinking about not when you're thinking about a course, I would say try to do some kind of research to see what what's out there or what, and how you can offer a different perspective on whatever is out there so that you when you put it out there, it's not the same like everybody else. But I do believe that courses right now is a great way to to tap into another revenue source, but also be able to, uh, another speaking opportunity for you to. Yeah, to reach your audience. I, I agree. I think that's great. So let's talk a little bit about digital products and maybe companion products with with books, what are some suggestions that you have for those types of things? All right. So most, mostly when you think about digital products, one of the things that you think about is workbooks. So if you, depending on the kind of book that you have written, having a workbook is a great companion um, guide, you know, it can be an upsell. What, what you, I found very interesting too with the whole, not with nonfiction um with the industry of nonfiction, you find that if your book is so like a normal nonfiction book is, for example, like a fifteen dollars. When you sell an ebook, um, a digital ebook, you're actually able to price it a bit more. So you could go like a twenty five dollars, right? And of course, you know, to produce this digital ebook is actually can be a little bit more of cheap affordable than to do your natural no non-fiction book so that is definitely something to take in consideration no i do believe that while right now we know that there's not a lot of shipping and things going on right you can think about other products with your books whether t-shirts or mugs and it depending on you know how you're positioning your brand as a non-fiction author then these things are also probably a planner if for example if i give you the example of the mother with the self-care if you wrote that book doing some kind of a self-care planner for moms that is an example of how you could actually do a digital product around it and again um our companion products so these are different things that you can actually tap into I love planners and workbooks personally. <laughs> I, I collect them and I, I'm really picky about them. And um, and I'm actually finishing up work on a workbook right now. So I have long been a fan of workbooks and I strongly recommend, especially for nonfiction authors who are teaching something or have some sort of method. I think workbooks are just a fantastic upsell and companion product for what you're doing. 
Yes, another thing that came to mind too is audio, because if you, depending on the book that you have, you could do some kind of audio training and you could do it as a free audio training um, that every person that purchased this book, they have to sign up for an email list, right? So when you're thinking about building a business around the book, don't just, you. I want to in- tell you that it's important to start looking at about an email list, right? Because you want to know, be able to build a relationship with our, our own persons that are interested in this topic so that when you're coming up with whatever other stream of income, you already have an audience outside of just social media. Oh, for sure. That email list is your best asset. I really believe that. <laughs> yes. um, you, Crystal, you also mentioned membership programs. Tell us what you mean by that. All right, so membership groups, um, persons, I, per, membership groups are great when you find persons that are similar, um, that desire to have to achieve similar goals. So you have many membership platforms right now. A lot of persons still uses like Facebook. So with the idea of membership, it, it can be long-term where you pay, for example, similar to what we do um, for a non-fiction association, we pay an annual fee, like a a one month and you as the author could be, you know, you could actually let um, have Facebook group where persons are interacting or you can have your membership group on the platform itself. You can also think about, you know, monthly topics around, you know, what you know that the, the audience regarding the membership would need to help to grow and, you know, personal development and also not just business development. It doesn't matter what your book, I do believe that you can tap into membership groups as long as you can find an audience that is interested. And the thing with membership groups too, you're able to actually, like persons can pay, will be, are willing to pay, you know, high value um, for these things if you are able to show them what is the value of being a part of it. And that's the most important part about any revenue stream is not about thinking about how, how can I make more money is more how can I serve these people and ensure that the solution that I'm providing for them, that it is beneficial and they're willing to pay for it. Yeah, I love that. I think it's a great model as well. I'm a big believer in building your own tribe and your community. And and if you're going to do that anyway, why not offer some sort of membership group opportunity where you bring your community together? And like you said, you could have an annual fee, a monthly fee. You could have a combination of both. And honestly, this is how the Nonfiction Authors Association was born. There was there was just a need. I saw a need. Yeah. Nothing like this existed. And so I always think encourage authors look in your space what's missing and what yes. can you do to fill that space yes yes crystal this has been so interesting i i actually didn't even realize that you were in jamaica what time is it there right now uh it's currently what 127 there about so i think you are one you are one hour behind me, <laughs> I believe. Oh, is that all? Okay, good. It's not one twenty-seven yeah. a.m. <laughs> so that's good. No, p.m. It's p.m. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. Um, well, tell our listeners what services you offer and how they can connect with you. Um, all right. So I'm a big social media person. So you can always follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And please, if you connect, just you know, hit me up in the DM and say you listened. Um, you found me. Um, on the Nonfiction Association, you know, audio training, I would love to connect. Um, so, of course, social media. I also, my website is crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-D-A-Y-E dot com. So, my name is Crystal Day, as in today. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, also, I do operate a publishing company, a faith-based publishing company. So, um, we do offer the one-stop shop regarding you come with you can even come with the idea of your book and we will just help to coach you so that's how i actually use my coaching degree my coaching certificate i help persons actually coach them through getting their books done uh currently in terms of you know just that's how the services i provide i do enjoy marketing a lot so i do help persons to think of creative ideas on how they can increase their income um through different marketing strategies online and offline because it's important i learned year very quickly that even though i was in jamaica 
that I could tap into the online space. So I work with clients, Singapore, you know, Japan, because even though I currently reside in Jamaica, so I definitely do believe in both offline and online brand strategy to just increase your revenue. So that's how I can serve persons now. Oh, that's fabulous. Crystal Day, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate all your great insights. It is such a pleasure. I'm so happy. Um, I love, I love, I'm always on nonfiction. Like it's one of those bookmark on my laptop because I'm always going on the website to just see what's going on in our industry. What's So I really love the work that you're doing and I'm a big fan of your work too, Stephanie. Oh, so you're you. so sweet. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad. I love it when, when uh, I'm talking to a member I didn't realize I was talking to. So thank you. <laughs> Hey, just a couple more things. You can join our email list by text message now. Get the help you need by picking up your phone and texting the letters NFAA to phone number 22828. That's 22828 with the message NFAA and you'll get automatically signed up for our email list. Also, we have some great sponsors for the NFAA and for the Nonfiction Writers Conference, including lulu.com. Check them out. Looking for a better way to grow your brand and business? Lulu can help! Use our free platform to publish in all of the best-selling formats, including hardcover and coilbound, and connect to our global print network to sell your books directly through your own website. Lulu's e-commerce integrations with Shopify and WordPress allow you to sell your books your way. Create a free account today at lulu.com to get started.